கேக்குதா மேம் நான் பேசுறது ஆ கேக்குது இல்ல நெட் Apu, can you switch off this light? Apu? Light. Off. மாம் இப்ப அட்மிட் பண்ணலாம் மாமா இல்ல பண்ணிரலாம் இல்ல 82 पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर वेटिंग मेल एडमिट देन not able to hear hola aapka
have we started we are not able to hear anything it has not started sir please wait Four more minutes, ma'am. Yes. Three more minutes. So we have a hundred participants inside. So I think since everybody is very calm, uh, people think there's something wrong. Yeah, yes, thing. yes. I have to. Linet can take over. I think. Yes. Can I begin, ma'am? You just tell the participants that they have to, you know, wait for two more minutes. Oh, okay. Because they. Yeah. Participants, please wait for two more minutes. We will begin the session so shortly. We can start, Lynette. Yes, ma'am. We will begin. Good morning and welcome, everyone. We are extremely delighted to meet you all through this webinar, Biology Degrees and Careers at a Glance, organized by the Department of Microbiology, Etheraj College for Women. Along with Dr. Krishna Prema, the head Department of Microbiology, I warmly welcome each and every participant for this webinar, which is designed exclusively for you. We as teachers are really happy to meet you students and uh, we are very glad that you are here for this uh, webinar and I uh, wish and pray that all your doubts and questions and expectations be addressed when the resource person, Dr. Daniel Alexer, addresses you and communicates with you. Few introduction about the college. Etheraj College for Women, which is uh, started in uh, 1948, was born out of the dream and vision of Shrivial Etheraj, an eminent lawyer and renowned philanthropist. He donated his life's entire earnings for the cause of women's education. The college has a dedicated team of 283 faculty members who maintain academic excellence and about 8,000 students who are the anchor to sustain the vision of the institution. 
And these are the courses that we offer, the arts courses, English, History and TTM, Commerce, Commerce, Honors, Economics, Corporate Sectorship, Bank Management, BBA, BCA, Accounting and BCom Accounting and Finance, Journalism and Communication. In the science stream, we offer plant biology and plant biotechnology, advanced zoology and biotechnology, applied sciences like microbiology, biochemistry and basic sciences like physics, chemistry, nutrition, mathematics and visual communication, computer science and MCA. And in the humanities stream, we offer um, human rights and duties, education and psychology. The Department of Microbiology offers BSc Microbiology course and MSc Applied Microbiology. And functioning for the past 22 years, students learn all the subjects like medical microbiology, immunology, soil, agricultural, and environmental microbiology, molecular biology, along with other basic and allied subjects with practical expertise. We have a very eminent speaker for this session to address you all and to clear all your doubts. Uh, Dr. Daniel Alex Anand has been holding the position of Associate Professor, Department of Bioinformatics and the Center for Molecular Data Science and Systems Biology, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology, Chennai. He has uh, specialized more, one second. Most of his research papers focus on systems biology perspective, understanding disease mechanisms and novel therapeutic strategies using big data analytics, artificial intelligence, including machine learning, deep learning, and mathematical modeling in order to enable pharmacogenomics, personalized medicine, and translational informatics. And sir has been working on human genomics and other genomic projects. So we are very happy to have you here, sir. You have a wide uh, variety of students uh, beginning from uh, standard 11, 12th, and also college students to hear from you, sir. Over to you now. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for this uh, kind introduction. It was, uh, it, it's, I'm really happy to be here uh, along with the Raj College to meet uh, students. Am I audible to all of you? I hope I'm audible. Am I audible, ma'am? Is it okay? Yes, 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 yes sir. Yes, I can hear audible. you. Okay, yes. okay. Can I share my slides? Yes, sir. One second. Please go ahead, sir. Are my slides visible now? Yes, sir. Good morning, all of you. I'm really happy, really happy this morning to uh, meet students who are passing out of school and who are entering another new phase of life. So uh, soon life will change for you. You will no longer wear uniforms. You would wear a lot of color dress, just like the slide is so colorful. And uh, you would probably not have text books. You would not, do not have prescribed textbooks, but you would have large pillow sized books to read and a lot of changes would come and you would have a lot of independence as you look towards college, life and future. So at the outset, I would like to thank the organizers, the Department of Microbiology of the Itaraj College for Women for giving me this opportunity to talk to all of you. And also I, I would like to wholeheartedly extend my thanks to my parent institution, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology, the Department of Bioinformatics for having had me for so many years there with them now. I hope in the next uh, few minutes, I've run through a lot of things. If you want these slides, I can very well pass it on to you. So I believe this would be just a start where we would try to look into uh, a very major area, probably in the next few weeks or months, you would actually take a lot of time 
and I believe you would be trying to put together your minds, your parents would help you, your teachers would help you to understand how you're going to choose what course, what course you're going to join. Okay, so uh, I would like to, these, these slides which I prepared, I, I, when I was trying to prepare for this session, I was uh, looking into a lot of material online too, as to how people are doing this. Uh, not much I, I really went through, but a few of them I went through. So, but this is going to be slightly different from whatever uh, you may find online because it would be, uh, there would be a lot of personal touch here. I would be talking about my own students, my own experience, my own life in biology with a degree and my career also. Okay, So I would really encourage, I would really have preferred uh, this to be a face-to-face -face session, but still right now, we do not have that privilege. So we will go on with this, probably a time would come when we would probably have a face-to-face -face session too. So the, the title for my uh, for this session is Biology, Degrees and Careers at a Glance. It's a beautiful title which was chosen by the Department of Microbiology at the Raj College. I'm thankful for them. Thankful to the HOD, Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Krishna Prema, uh, Ms. Lynette, who is coordinating this program, as well as all the team in the Department of Microbiology. Yeah, I think you should all read this. 30 years from now, it won't matter what shoes you wore, how your hair looked, or the jeans you bought. What will matter is that is what you learned and how you used it. Okay? So that's exactly what we are trying to do now. We are trying to understand what is to be prioritized. So what should be your priority, especially youngsters like you, as well as priorities in learning. So from all the experience which I've got, I'm going to share a lot of things with you, as well as, as so uh, we'll, uh, we'll be having a panel of uh, experts uh, to answer your questions at the end of this session. They would also help you understand this. So why biology? Okay, I would probably, I would take it a little slow and I would not probably be, uh, I would not try and try to make it not too heavy on you, but still I'm going to share a lot of things to you. So biology is basically a natural science, right? It's not exactly a, a man-made science. It's, it's, I would say, God-made science. Study of living organisms. We still do not know to define life properly. We still do not know whether coronavirus is alive or dead. We have not really defined a virus as living or non-living. So we're trying to talk about a very hugely complex field. Biology is very hugely com complicated. It's very hugely complex because it's not man-made. Life and cell is not man-made. You should, have, you should have that in your mind. So it includes the study of living organisms, their function, their growth, their evolution, their taxonomy, and all such. Biology degrees are also equally extensive. Okay? And there are lots of careers, lots of careers, umpteen number of careers with a lot of ranges and a lot of challenges. Biology for all of us as biologists is basically a fascination. We do not get pushed into this. We really love it. We start our life in biology because we just like it. We don't know exactly why, but it's it's a fascination which probably should be the motivation for you to take up a study or a career in biology. That would be the most rewarding experience as, as, as far as I know. So biology, when you talk, try to talk about biology, Biology had its humble beginnings. Just like any other science, we try to understand the science by observing. We try to observe, we try to make notes, and then we try to learn. We try to make inferences. That's how biology's beginnings were. But biology has moved very far ahead from biology as an observational science to biology as a predictive science. Probably you would, I'm sure all of you as students of biology I think this would also apply to students who probably don't take biology, probably who take computer science too. They should also, because a lot of concepts in computer science are derived from biology. Okay? So origins of biology, probably a lot of, it even happened BC, a lot of, even before Christ, a lot of things which were going on, but a lot of documented science went on later on, towards, towards the last 100, 200, 300 years might be. Okay. So, you know, the father of modern genetics is Gregor Mendel. So Mendel was actually an Austrian monk who went on to do a study with pea plants. And it was such an observational study. He was looking at tall plant, dwarf plant, 
And you know, a beautiful thing, I still remember my ninth standard uh, NCRT uh, biology teacher, name is Sun Zen actually. So what she did, so she, she actually told, us, told, told, us, told me a small word, told in the class she told a small word about uh, the greatness of Mendel. Why, why, why should Mendel's work be so great? Because what Mendel did, it is not exactly what he did, but how he did it. When there was a no concept of a gene, when there was nothing like that, he went on to propose something called characters or traits, and he went on to do experiments based on that and his deductions. You know? Awesome. Those have been beautiful. That's the quality of a scientific mind we are talking about. So biology is like that. You, you try to innovate there. A lot of innovation is there because you have a lot of challenges ahead. Cancer is still incurable. So we have a lot of challenges ahead. So we need innovation. We need to face a lot of challenges every day. So biology has moved on from an observational experimental science to a predictive science. That's one thing you should understand. So what can you do with biology degree? I'm not actually going to touch with medicine. Pardon me for it. I'm not going to touch about neat examinations. I'm not going to talk to you about uh, medicine. I'm not going to talk to you about allied medical courses, pharmacy or physiotherapy or nursing. I'm going to talk purely about non-medical courses because there are a lot of... That's actually a different stream altogether. This is actually a different stream. Okay, So you should understand that. So by biology degree means a pure science, a pure basic science degree. That's what we are trying to talk about. So when we talk about a, a, a career, so after you, I'll, I'll, I'll come to uh, the degrees as such a little, little later on. I'm just giving an overview now. So biology degree, as I told you, they're very extensive, they're very versatile. And what are the sort of things you can actually do with a biology degree? One of the best scopes of biology lies in research. Okay, Just now we are now, we, everyone is... Uh, struggling to find a vaccine. Everyone wants, what are these biologists doing? What are the, what is, where is all this money, government money going on to? Why is nobody finding a vaccine for Corona? Yeah, that's when we ask, right? We really don't have any importance given to biology till you have a Corona-like problem which brings all our life to a screeching halt. Yeah, it's come to a screeching halt. Governments have shut down, everything is shut down. So research is the best scope. So when you try to look into biology, have that in your mind, research, the career, career in research is your best option. It's a beautiful option and you should probably be interested in it. Only then probably you should, this would really make sense. Apart from that, you have a lot of opportunities, high paying jobs like being a pharmacologist, it's one of the high, highest paying jobs. It's very, it's a very tough degree to complete also. So then you have a, 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 a being a biologist, an ecologist, and, and a natural science uh, a conservation officer, nature conservation officer, a biotechnologist, a forensic scientist, and a role in government agencies as a science writer, as a teacher, all of these things and many more are probably what await you with the biology degree. So we have a lot of scope and a lot of specializations. So biology degrees, we can actually probably, one of the, one of the basic things you need to understand is that when you start to go into your college in undergraduation, this is, I, this is one point I would be repeating it later on also. So you would, you would, it, it would be good if you can generalize, if you take a subject which probably is quite neutral, okay, unless and until you really want to specialize in your undergraduation and you really know what you're doing. If you're really bent on a career in bioinformatics, I would say go on with it. Okay? Otherwise go on with a basic science degree and then specialize in post-graduation still specialize in your research, you know, your PhD, in your postdoc. Okay? That's how it goes on. Okay, So we try to start slow and then go specializing. So scientific research is cru crucial. Probably Corona has really reinforced this and we understand that it is crucial to, to, do, to do research in basic science, to understand how diseases are spread, to educate the general public about common etiquettes of how do you sneeze and cough, how do you maintain basic decency in the public, all of those things. So all of these things are not alone for India I'm talking about, I'm talking about the whole world. So we need to have a lot of such basic understanding as to how diseases spread. So it's a very highly stimulating career for biology graduates and there's a lot of scope, probably you can find the broader scope and so much of research can be conducted across various dis disciplines and specializations. Typical careers, as I was mentioning you, a typical career involves 
research. Okay, so you, you actually start with a science, a plant science and an animal science degree, and then you go on to actually do a master's, and then you still go on to specialize in something called gen something like genetics, et cetera. This is one of my students who came out of school and we were working together first year. She, when she was in first year of BTEC in bioinformatics, her name is Priyanka Maripuri. And uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mention that here. So uh, she went on and the first few months of her study, we went on to work together to publish a paper. This is the paper, it's called Disentangling the HIV-1 Human Protein Interaction Networks and the Implication, the Dynamics of Viral Replication of Pathogenesis. It was a very, very small work. It, it looks, it sounds a bit complex, don't worry about it. So it was a very small work. What would actually a student of, out of school, 12th standard, do in six months time? Probably you wouldn't expect too much from her, but a very small work was done. We went on to pub, we went on to present in the conference in HIV, in an HIV conference out here in Chennai. It got published in this prestigious journal called BMC Infectious Diseases, which is listed under PubMed Central, which is a very prestigious thing for the student as well as for myself as a teacher who guided her. And then you know, like it went on to it went on to direct her whole life. This one paper got her into CCMB Hyderabad, which is one of the premier institutions in India. And then from there, she went on to her, to her, her finally a project also there. That gave her an entry into IIT Madras. She was there for two years. And right now she's in at Canada doing, she's doing a, a course. Uh, she's a graduate student in medical genetics at the University of Alberta where she's not paying one single price, you understand? She's not paying money, but they are paying her to do this course. Awesome. That's exactly how things work. You know, like you try to develop an interest and you put your heart and soul into it and God rewards you for that. So that's, that's one, that's probably one instance. There are other areas where you have, especially in healthcare, research is one. Healthcare is one of the most dominating industries. When President Donald Trump came here to India, he actually literally told this word, healthcare revolution. What happens? What is the need? When Corona came about, we understood what's the importance and need for healthcare. There's so much of need, so much of research. We really do not have people to do it. We do not have students. We do not have the right kind of people, right kind of minds, fine minds we need. Healthcare is one industry where there is so much of funding. There is so much of funding. Money gets poured inside when you say HIV. It's like tsunami. That's the talk of the town. You understand? So biology careers in healthcare are probably one of the most funded. And you we also understand that the lot of opportunity to, to uh, it's, it's not only working for a company, it's even making your own company. This is one of my own students who, who again passed out in 2017. He went on to, from Satyabama, he went on to University of Salford at uh, Manchester in the UK. And then he, he came back and he has actually started a company at, in, in Bangalore at the Bangalore Bioinnovation Center called Zoom Life Sciences. Okay. I'm totally, it's basically a bioinformatics, bioinformatics based company where he works on the microbiome sequencing of uh, microbes as well as human samples. So it is again, one of the areas where we really have to catch up. China is really leading the race here, even better than the US, we really have to catch up in India. So it's not alone working for a company, it's not alone working for an in the healthcare industry, you could even start your own startup and the government of India provides a lot of subsidies, a lot of encouragement for those who want to have a startup. Okay, that's again one very typical thing you can actually do with a biology degree. Next one is environmental conservation, yes. Just like you have the, the real big serious problems, you have environmental degradation going on. A lot of emphasis is given these days because we know that there are a lot of species which, is, which are endangered and uh, the roles of a conservation biologist are too critical when, when it comes to conserving natural and wildlife and also harnessing. We, are, we still do not know how many there in the ocean, a lot of need for this whole uh, science taxonomy preservation where we can actually go on to identify organisms, name organisms, and use them for our own benefit. 
the other most important very interesting careers like probably i would i would identify myself with this career beautiful challenging every day working on a new problem every every batch you look at new students every year you try to guide 150 to 100 different uh, uh, projects you understand it's, it's one of the most challenging jobs to be a teacher in biology because you have so much of so much of uh, uh, diversity to work on you're not actually forced by a company to work on a specific area alone you can actually work do research in multiple areas where you have a lot of freedom graduates research students is one of the most interesting things recently i led one of my phd students into um, a, a phd in systems biology the thesis was correct, was corrected by dr karthik ramana from iit madras it was, it was such a such a jubilant moment for me when i could see his comments you know like we worked for 5 years he actually literally worked for 6 years and then so it, it is actually a, a joy to teach so teaching is probably if you would have a flair to teach others probably you you do a lot of group study with your friends and you you already do a lot of teaching i know unconsciously but doing it consciously carries a lot of reward in in education and we have a lot of freedom there is no there's not 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 too much of stress there out there though we do have a lot of work to do but stress is much much lesser because we deal with human beings we deal with students like you yeah other things for example when you have a basic degree you you again go on to specialize so when i say basic degree i'm talking about pure science degree like botany zoology even we would take my basic degree like biochemistry microbiology which are, which are kind of interdisciplinary those also come into this area okay. so biotechnology goes into slightly the next level but still there's a lot of demand there's a lot of industry need for this career in biotechnology is again one of the most coveted careers right now throughout the world okay. so you can actually start off with biotechnology or you can actually start off with any basic biology degree specialize at the masters level with biotechnology this is one of my students hannah perpetua went on to uh, do her do her btech in bioinformatics she she diversified to biotechnology in her pg which she did in the us at the new york university and then she's for the last around 10 years or so she's out there in the us and she's quite well settled she's got a very challenging job you, you can you please look can, can you look into her uh, the places where she's visited the kind of institutes she's worked with department of cardiology department of development and molecular biology how does a single cell develop into a full 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 full, full, full fledged organism that's called developmental biology one of the most fascinating fields ever in biology how does a baby develop in the mother's womb so all of these things so we have a lot of focus out out here in the bottom right bottom corner you've got agriculture food science medicine genetic engineering drug development advancing medical technologies nanotechnology all of these are actually diversifications of biotechnology that's again one of the most coveted areas in life science forensic science yes when rajiv gandhi was assassinated he was a prime minister you know like the department of forensic science which is out there at the marina beach just opposite the lighthouse were called in they were the ones who actually were called in to work with, to find out what really happened what happened and what is the cause of such a such a such a criminal activity okay? so forensic science probably some of you many of you are watching uh, probably x files or csi crimes investigation or a lot of things we were really interested in in a, in a job where you have a lot of challenges a um, lot of policing a lot of uh, uh, legal issues things like that so forensic science is again a, an area which is meant for specific people who have a specific mindset so this is one of my students deepak philip who went on to do his btech in bioinformatics who moved to the uk who finished his uh, uh, masters in uh, uh in forensic science and he came back out here he again did uh, cyber forensics out here and he's now employed with uh, infosys right now okay. so he did his uh, masters out here at the university of madras out here again he did a second masters and then he he joined he was he, he, so you can actually move with a lot of places move 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 with a lot of people out here and is again a very challenging uh, uh field this is again a continuation of the previous slide where how biology bioinformatics can be used 
as incriminating evidence in a court of law. This is actually a case where uh, a doctor goes on to infect a patient with a needle which is infected with HIV. And how does science come in there? How does biology and bioinformatics come in there to, 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 uh, uh, to, to catch the criminal? To, to frame the doctor to, uh, to tell that yes you are the one who did this and so there's a lot of lot of complex science involved and this was the first time a u.s code of law considered a, an evolutionary tree a phylogenetic tree as evidence in a court where in, in a court hearing where it, where the doctor was incriminated careers in government and policy this is a slide i do have a lot of uh, uh, contention and a lot of pride to tell that this is one of my classmates. He was my classmate till my 10th standard, uh, Dr. Vasanta Kumar. He went on to come to MMC, finish his medicine. He became a surgeon. And then he went on to do his uh, civil services. He cleared all that. In the first attempt, he was one of the finest minds we've ever come across in our class. And then uh, he, was, he was actually uh, the secretary to Kejriwal. And then he's moved on to right now to the US, uh, to Princeton and to Johns Hopkins to do a master's in public health. So you have a lot of opportunities where you can diversify. Any biology degree can actually enter into administrative services in India. Okay? So that's again, one of the, uh, uh, you, you can actually impart a lot of uh, great help to the public, to the government, to the country as a whole. So public health is again, very important, especially in India and in countries like India, where you have a lot of epidemics, endemics, which move on fast. This is another one of my own uh, PhD colleagues, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Girish Kumar. He, he was actually a BSc and an MSc in zoology. He came out to our uh, institute to do his PhD. He did a beautiful work. He published good papers. Right now, he is He's a very, a very good scientist. He's, he's an epidemiologist and he's also a microbiologist and he's a deputy director at the National Institute of Epidemiology, which is there at Ambatur. So they actually, they study the spread of diseases. How does disease spread? How does Corona spread? Why is it spreading so fast? Why is it going in this community? What is the source of the infection? So all of those things are studied. So this is again, an institute of the Indian Council for Medical Research, where, you, where they, they promote a lot of medical research. Yes, this is again another one slide which is which really uh, uh, which really blows my mind. You know, like sometimes we really are so close-minded that we do not actually when you when you study one science in biology, we don't really relate well with the other person. When you know something in one field, we don't share it with the other person. You know, like you know, this is actually uh, this is one of a one of a very good friend of mine, and uh, he's quite junior to me. He's probably around uh, five years junior to me. His name is Albert Einstein. He was from a village. He could not speak proper English. And uh, he did his, you know, he did his uh, B in production engineering at Karunya. He finished in 2000. He came out to Chennai. He went on to do his uh, master's in engineering. He moved to the US, five years in the US. He came back. He started his own company. And you know what? He's basically an automobile engineer. Okay. But he's now got a company in biomedical engineering biomedical sciences. He does a lot of bioinformatics. You can check out these websites, INX Biosciences, INL Technologies, and see what he's doing. He's running a company which has got a turnaround of 10 crores. Would you believe it? Coming back to India from the US. That's, that's something all of us should do. Not go back, go there and settle and work for another country where we've got all our benefits from this country. Don't do that. Come back here. And then if you would go, if you go out, come back. This is a beautiful example where how a person can move from a totally different discipline to another discipline and establish himself because he's got the right mind and the right people with him. And he really wanted to have a startup of his own. I can't, I can't imagine the kind of financial growth I've had in the last 10 years with what he has had. I hope you understand what I'm trying to tell you. 10 crore turnover. Okay. It's, it's, in, it's in Gauri Wakam. Probably you should visit him someday. Tell my name. I'm sure he'll, he'll be happy to take you and to, to show you around. Fine. So, the, so there he works on, can you look at the left bottom corner, data science and engineering design and medical science, AI, machine learning, computational and mathematical methods and medicine. These are all the hottest areas in biology these days. This is where the world is going. This is where the world is going. Another very interesting thing is that you can totally diversify. You, can, you, could, you could do a degree in biology and then you could move into something totally different. 
when Virendra Sevag and Gautam Gambhir came out here for our college cultures, I had the privilege of going and picking them at the airport and coming, you know, like, and Sevag actually, suddenly his, his BMW turned somewhere, it went into a company, it went to, into a, the industrial estate in Gindi. And there, I, I, I didn't know that it was actually a company run by Sachin and Sevak. And everyone there introduced themselves to me, telling that I'm an analyst with the Indian cricket team. Analyst. I didn't understand what does analyst means. This is one of our own students, Aditya Chakravarti, who finished his B.Tech in biomedical engineering, who, right, who traveled with the Indian hockey team to Rio de Janeiro as an analyst. They do data analytics. They take a lot. They take 100 videos of every player for 100 matches and analyze what his best moves are, best positions are, whom he works well with. That's basically data analytics. You know, like <clears throat> if India and Pakistan play a match, last five minutes it goes into the penalty corner, they would have a probability telling that 99% India would win because they've seen 200 matches where India has won. Okay? So it is actually like, it's a totally different area where you work with a totally a different team altogether. Like this is actually a very, very high profile career where you actually travel with the national team and travel to international arenas and work with them. And it also, also you have a lot of opportunities in publishing scientific publishing also. Okay, So Aditya Chakravarti is basically a performance analyst and you also have a lot of future in science publishing and communication also with a biology degree. So what can you study? I'm, I'm sorry, uh, it, it should be, uh, where, where can you study? Okay, So where can you study bio, the biology degree? So we are now trying to talk about, first I would give you an, an overview as to what are the premier institutes and then we would come back to uh, institutes out here. So you have a lot of premier institutes uh, uh, like IITs, Indian Institute of Technology, Indian Institute of Science. So where these are institutes which are which are which are which, are, which really help not only engineering sciences but also pure sciences. Study to study biology, pure science and biology, and you have a lot of premier institutes. I would I would not be going into the details of it for the lack of time. I would really I would like to love to share this information with you. Uh, through, through whatever means. So in the Institute of Science is one of those places which should be a, a place where you should attempt. Even for a BSc or an MSc degree, you should, you should try to write an entrance examination. You would know where things are. You, should, you would know what is really expected of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a biology aspirant. So these are some of the best places. And one of the beautiful things about India is that in India, when you study these things, it's very cheap. It's hard to get inside. It's very cheap. Abroad, it is easy to get inside. It is very costly. Okay, so it is it is good for you, especially at least to do your undergraduate out here in India, and then probably move for your postgraduate to, to abroad. But still, I would really encourage you to be here okay? because we are trying to contribute to the country. You understand? We are trying to contribute to the country. We do. We have so much of benefit we have received from the country. We have to give back to the country. The University of Science is a good, very good place where <coughs> you should try. And they also have these so-called integrated courses. It's because they call it four-year BSc. You have a lot of such kinds of kind of courses are offered. All of these things you can find online. You have so Indian, Indian, Indian Institute of Science is only one of its kind in the whole of the country, and it was at Bangalore. Recently, the government of India made a move to increase this. So right now we have the so-called ISERs or Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, and they are found in multiple places. They found exactly at seven campuses, Kolkata, Maharashtra, Mohali, Bhopal, Trivanandapuram, Tirupati, Barampur, and there are a few campuses which are coming up to. So you have a lot of opportunities to really, to learn things at world-class standards with, with beautiful technology infrastructure, with, with wonderfully knowledgeable uh, personal professors to work with you. And Iser is one place. TIFR, Tata Institute of, Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai. There's also another place where you can actually do a lot of uh, master's degree and a PhD program. And this is also a, a, an institute which is a premier institute in India. In the Institute of Space Science and Technology, some of you might be interested in working with for NASA, okay? because almost 70% of NASA is Indians, they say, or South Indians, they, they say. So it's like, you, that's again a, a beautiful, uh, a beautifully enticing career where you do out of the world research, you really do space research. And we do have an institute in Trivandrum where 
they train you. So this, this is also a very uh, interesting place. You should probably look into this uh, online. It's another beautiful place, one of its kind in the country, and it's out here in Taramani in Chennai, in the Institute of Mathematical Sciences, call it IMSC. So this is actually a place which is exclusively only for research. We have collaborations with some of the professors there. Some of them are good friends of us, ours. And it's only at PhD and postdoc level you have here. Okay, and, but I'm just telling you where biology has gone. You look into this computational biology, yes. We work with a lot of, so a lot of high level, this is basically a mathematical institute. What does biology have to do with it? Biologists get rashes on their body when you say maths, right? Yeah, I, I used to get, now I'm learning calculus now after my PhD and after 10 years. So th that, that's the point. So you need to understand that maths is vital, especially when you come into biology and computational biology, it's, it's hugely complex. You need to understand patterns. So computation and mathematics are an inseparable part of biology now. Okay? So this is a beautiful institute. You should look into what they're doing. They really, they, they encourage a lot of uh, internships from students. Many of our students just write to them. They just call us, come for one week, two week, three week, one month, sit with me holidays, learn things and go. Okay? So it's for, it's for college students. It's for an undergraduate student. You can actually go for a short term internships. They're, you can look at the website for opportunities. Yes. This is actually a word which is told by uh, 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 a professor at IIT Madras. It's not unemployment, it's unemployability. What's the difference? We are not exactly qualified. A student these days does not read. That's the real problem. We have to understand that we've got to make ourselves employable the SAT examination has, the major part is English, you know, and SAT examinations are accepted out here in many of the institutes in India too, not alone in MIT and Harvard, but India is India also. And English plays a very important role. Improve, developing your communication skills. You may know a lot of things, but how are you talking with others? How are you adjusting with others? How are you strong in your basics? Your 11th and 12th standard form your basics. Without that, no research you can do. So take your books, probably I would, I would love to once again, go back to school and sit and learn you know, that sort of mentality. So have in your mind that employability is a skill which we give. It is supposed to be, we make ourselves employable. It's not the employer who gives us employment. It's we who make us make ourselves. So one very important thing here is that as far as our, our system is concerned, this is something a very wise man told me when I was in school. He said, our education system makes us blinkers. I asked him, uncle, what does it mean? He told, see, if you know biology, you won't know maths. If you know computer science, you, will know, you won't know biology. If you know economics, you would not know science. That's exactly how our compartmentalized education is about. But then there comes this beautiful thing called interdisciplinary subjects. So we are having actually a lot of beautiful uh, subjects right now where probably a lot of things get overwhelming. We have a lot of things to learn, a lot of complex things to, 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 to study during our, during, during our courses in BSc or an MSc or a BTEC, et cetera. But then we understand that this really takes off this blinker status from us. Interdisciplinary subject studies are here to stay. And a lot of Indian universities which are offering these courses. <coughs> this was actually a, a very long phenomenon, but India has taken, a, taken, a, taken it up recently. And we do have a lot of freedom in learning also. These days you have a lot of in, in, in Indian universities which gives you this, when you probably, when you try to look into institutes for your higher education, you should look into institutes which probably offer these sort of uh, uh, facilities. It's called choice-based credit system. Okay, so you could actually choose the courses you want to study. If there are 48, 52 papers you need to cover in a three-year or a four-year course, what are the papers I'm going to study? Okay, so there will be some core courses which are compulsory. Apart from that, you could actually choose your teacher. You could actually choose your subject and do it. Okay, this is exactly how things go on uh, abroad. So Indian universities are adopting it and many of the Indian universities, Indian universities have adopted it quite well. 
okay, there are a lot of interdisciplinary courses, institutes, and courses. And here, literally, what I'm trying to tell you is that a basic science, a biotechnology. So all of these are modern disciplines: biochemistry, microbiology. All of these are biotech, uh, bi biotechnology, bioinformatics. So this is a bio plus informatics, bio plus chemistry, bio mathematics. Probably nobody offers bio mathematics. So biophysics. You have in, in the University of Madras offering biophysics, Department of Crystallography and Biophysics offering an MSc in biophysics. So it's, it's a very interesting course where you, you have uh, uh, um, our great Nobel laureates who visited uh, um, uh, that department out here. So a, a lot of interesting things goes on with interdisciplinary courses. Then you have integrated courses. You would probably not have heard much of this. So it's not exactly going to, going to a BSc or a BTEC course, instead of going into an MSc or an MTEC course. Integrated PhD courses are there. Okay. So you try to actually do in one stretch, sit in one place. So you need to choose a good place, a good institute for this, and then go on to do. So you have a lot of integrated, uh, a lot of core, a lot of institutes offering integrated education in uh, in bioscience, in bioinformatics, biotechnology, nanoscience. So it could be an integrated MSc degree, integrated PhD degrees are offered. So you should also look into check and check out check these examinations. I was just looking for your sake. I was looking at this something called IIT Jam 2020, where the the, the application status is still on. You can still apply for this. So these are also for MSc admissions out here in, at very good um, institutes in India, and it's conducted by IIT Kanpur. PhD and MSc in neuroscience, NBRC Gurgaon. So you have a lot of such courses, a lot of such places where they offer integrated courses. This is actually uh, a common entrance examination for all the central universities across the country. Okay, It's called CUCET uh, 2020. <coughs> Sorry. Yes. It's times have really changed these days and education has become really free for all. A student need not be limited to his own university. I could sit here in my own classroom or in my home, and I could listen to an MIT professor. MIT stands number one in engineering education in the whole of the world. So you have a lot of online courses, MIT, OCW, Open Courseware, Coursera. These are ways by which you could actually go on to earn degrees, degrees, or you could actually earn certifications. I had my son who was actually sitting and with courses. He took two, three days maximum to finish a course. I was struggling to finish courses. You know, your minds are very, very sharp. You know, like you need to understand that there's a lot of opportunities. Just, just have a look into these. In, 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 in Coursera, they offered, they've actually offered a, a beautiful facility for 3,400 courses plus courses free for just for this COVID time. Just for three, four months, they actually offered. So it's, even if it is paid, it is around 2,000 rupees for the certification. Otherwise, a lot of courses are quite affordable and you would have face-to-face -face interactions, assignments, and you would actually clear courses quickly and you have certified you have certified by University of Yale or University of Edinburgh and things like that. It's, it's really very interesting to uh, see how education has changed. Coursera and it, all of these comes under what we call massive open online courses and the lots of providers you could probably just type MOOC or Coursera on online on Google and you would find a lot of uh, 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 places where you're offered online courses. This came out quite recently, I believe. This is on 21st May, 2020. Students can now study engineering and economics together at UGC, as UGC approves uh, dual degrees. So you, one, you do it regular mode, on the one you do it with online. So these are again, ways by which you can actually earn a lot of degrees. So this is the time for learning and you should make use of it. Okay. Now I would like to inspire you with a few thoughts about biology education. I think I'm running, uh, Probably I, I think I should go off quick quickly now. Okay, so this was actually a, a biology biology scientist. He was actually a biologist basically, and uh, he was uh, a biochemist. And uh, you know, like this is actually the patent I downloaded the complete patent. This is the first page of the patent. Patent is basically intellectual property, just like we have a property of house or land out here. You could actually have a thought in your mind. You could actually desc describe it, and you would go to the patent office out here in Gindi. Or near the bridge, and then you, you would file a provisional patent or a complete patent, and the, it would, the government of India would call it call you extraordinary, you know, because you've done something great for the country. And this man was a person who revolutionized biology. 
I think really he really deserves a mention here by this technique called polymerase chain reaction. Can you do you remember who he is? Caribbean Mullis. Yes. So Caribbean Mullis went on to actually have a thought when he was driving out the Californian mountains, and this because came out because of repetitive work he was doing. And you know what? Yeah. This is actually what the Cetus Corporation for whom he worked got. He was not actually given that money. He was given ten thousand dollars. But this was exactly what they sold it for three hundred. Million U.S. dollars for a single thought in biology, and it has revolutionized biology forever. Take all the most valuable persons from sports and football and rock and movies. Carrie Mullis has done much more for mankind than all of them put together. That's what the slide shows. You should probably look into his lecture at, at the Nobel Prize at ORG website. Okay. So I don't know how many zeros. I don't know what number this is. Okay, so that's exactly what happens. You know, like there's so much of potential, so much of thought which comes in to your brain. It could come in. It could revolutionize. Nobody, the nature and science did not publish his paper, but then he he he's now we know we know the value of what Carrie Mullis did. Yeah, computers are very important. Okay, so just like what 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 uh, Karimal has done. So we are trying to actually have a lot of modeling, simulation, and biology. So we are trying to have a lot of interdisciplinary uh, things going on. So computer is a very important tool. All of this happened because of one event. It's, it was an event which which lasted for nearly thirteen years, thirteen to fifteen years. Where we were, we, we we got the complete sequence of the human genome. This is U.S. Pres, U.S. President Bill Clinton with uh, somebody who took over from James Watson, uh, Dr. Francis Collins, and Craig Venter. They had, he, uh, where uh, Bill Clinton was telling that this is greater than man landing on the moon. We've got the entire human genome un uncoded, decoded. That's exactly what they did, and you know that really it went, it, it 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 resulted in a new era in biology. so all of those things which we are we are doing right now so the question was we have 23 books yes we got chromosome 1 first base to last base and till the y chromosome so what so the point was like we've had a lot of projects which have really changed the face of understanding biology so biology as i told you it has moved on from an observation to a predictive science where we are trying to have a lot of overlaps a lot of mathematics coming in so a lot of interesting biology things going on and because of that we could actually predict diseases we can actually help a person with personalized medicine that's where biology is moving on to so we moved on from an era from 1990 to 2020 right now so genomics proteomics and right now we call systems biology a holistic perspective of biology we've got right now so what all that we've been doing right now was this like blind men trying to touch different parts of an elephant and have a perspective but we were trying to get the big picture like what kalpana chawla got from outer space she said i don't mean to be philosophical but i really want to go back i don't want to pinch my neighbor you know like that sort of thing so we we try to understand that when you know the picture you get very humble and you get really you become a better better human being drug development is a process which is very which is really critical and we do have a very very less amount of success years together 15 years 10 years 15 years it takes to produce one drug you know it's actually a hard very very it's a lot of hard work is done and a lot of need is there for biologists to work there metabolic engineering there's also a new field which comes out out of systems biology look at this matrix you could call it the mk cross and matrix right so you could actually you could, this is actually uh, uh, seven columns and three rows uh, 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 seven columns and three rows you got here imagine 20 columns and 20 20000 rows and 22000 columns that's exactly what happens in e coli okay so when you look into the reactants and the reactions which happen in a single celled organism like e coli it gets massively complex that is what is called biological complexity that is why we need to bring in mathematicians mathematicians and computational biologists to understand biological complexity it has become fully network oriented we need to understand graph theory to not to understand biology biology is so complex we need to understand we need to put in a lot of years of study to understand this is actually a virologist from cmc velour who was there when i was studying uh, um msc we used to go for postings out there to cmc velour so she she gave this uh, thought out here and it it came out in a lot of dailies out here so the sequence is available so the moment you it became an epidemic and a pandemic they went on to sequence the organism and we had a lot of uh uh, uh, uh 
uh, profit out of having a sequence. Coronavirus has all that we've got right now, all the progress we are making is because of the sequence as well as a lot of structure-based studies, structural biology it is called. So you could actually look into, just go look, go, go online and just put as coronavirus protein structure. You, know, you have a lot of beautiful places where scientists have been working day and night to understand how things work with coronavirus and how you would make, you would make a vaccine. They are quickly moving towards it. It's all because of uh, sequence and structure-based studies. Big data used to be, we used, we used to call it astronomical. Astronomical distance, that's actually the size of big. Now, we understand that soon genomical is going to beat astronomical because so much of information and data has been generated. And that's exactly what is happening out here in the coronavirus also. You have a lot of data analytics, data science opportunities out here when we try to look into coronavirus. Okay, So all of these are actually, I've taken it from a machine learning repository called Kaggle. It's, it's an online free repository where you can download data and you can actually use tools, like for example, tools which are available on another uh, uh, on, on another uh, platform called DataCam. It is only 6,000 rupees per, per year where you can learn how to analyze all of these public repository data to understand what is really happening. It could be about social networks, it could be about biological networks, it could be about your Facebook network, but we understand that these are things which are very, very complex. Okay. So we are moving on to an area, uh, an, an era where we are trying to look for personalized medicine. Okay, so drugs don't work always in a generic manner. So we understand that cancer is very, very personal. Every person's cancer is personal. Every person's mutation, which 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 predisposes him to cancer, is personal. So we need to treat the person, whether it's the dosage or the drug. We need to be very careful about what we are doing. So this is what is called P4 medicine. This is again one of the biggest explosive explosive developments of biology. Okay. So we, we are trying to talk about, so this is not for doctors. This is for biologists. You know, doctors have a lot of things to do on their own in, clinically, but this is for scientists and biologists who actually try to actually look at, look at uh, uh, disease and cure from a different perspective. So this is called personalized, predictive, preventive, participatory medicine, which is actually going to be the future of medicine. The future of life science and medicine is going to be P4 medicine. Yeah. When I started biology, people told me this. Hey, do something manly, man. Biology is for girls. Why are you studying plant sciences? That's exactly what I did. You know, like, I really want to talk to all of them. What? You know, right? You know what coronavirus has done? Biology is for girls. Yeah. It actually, more men are dying because of, because of that problem. So we are now moving on to the next generation of computational biologists. So youngsters like you should come up. We really don't have people. I have a person called Dr. Sona Vasudev, a good friend of mine, who says we don't have students, Alex. She's a, she, she directs this course called Systems Medicine at the Georgetown University in the US, Georgetown University. You know, we don't have good people to work with. There's so much of data dumped every day. We don't have people to curate the data on the database. So we need a lot of people, young minds, to work with precision medicine, to work with big data. This is the hottest right now. You go to Hyderabad, every bus stop has data analytics course put up, advertised. Hyderabad and Bangalore have really picked up fast. Chennai is lagging behind. We should, we should make something, we should do something about it. So big data, how to find out how to actually treat, uh, develop drugs and treat patients, it's probably very important. <coughs> An application of biology, big data, cancer. This is actually targeting, this targeted destruction of a cancerous cell. So this is, this is basically all of these diseases, all of these diseases are genomic based. I have a very good friend of mine, Dr. Bibaskar out here, and right now he's at Triple M Hospital. He was actually a zoologist who went on to study genetics at Gujarat University. Okay, he was, it was basically a zoology degree, and then he learned genetics. He came to Chennai 30 years back. He started the Department of Genetics at Apollo, Shankar Netralaya, and right now he's at Triple M. You know what he does? You have a hole in the heart, he says, there is a gene behind it. There is a mutation behind it. That's exactly what we're trying to say, okay? So it's not, it's not alone about genetics. It's about a lot of other things too. Biophysics, biochem, bio biochemistry comes into play. Okay. A lot of importance is given, especially to genetics and pinpointed uh, nucleated polymorphisms and mutations, etc. Yes. Coming on to opportunities. Okay, I'm, I'm going to quickly finish off, probably under a few minutes, I'll finish off. Um, we have a lot of money out here. Okay. 
So this is about median salaries by country of work. Look at the US. India is there in the picture, but India is coming up. We have a lot of investments in the healthcare sector, which are coming up in, which are projected in 2030. If we just check about healthcare industry in India in 2030, you would get a lot of information about how the, 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 how the salaries are going to improve in India itself. Abroad, awesome. You would actually, you, you go abroad with, with a microbiology or a bioinformatics degree, you have an awesome opportunity where you get really paid probably better than even the IT, IT guys, you know, like that sort of, so big data is the next big wave in biology. And a lot of companies, you should just look at, see these are some of the biggest names, some of the biggest names, and all of these are artificial intelligence startups in imaging diagnostics, drug discovery, predictive analytics and risk scoring, genomics, hospital decision support, mental health. So we have a lot of areas and a lot of st startups are coming up and a lot of opportunities await the biologists. Scholarships are one area where, where many of us really do not know. I, did not, I really, did not, I really did, not, did not know it unless and until I went and worked in a college. Government of India offers a lot of scholarships, okay? So I think you could just check out as government of India scholarships you would actually have. So it is from the central government they give, state-wise they give, okay? So there, there, are, there, are, uh, there are lots of uh, uh, scholarships specifically uh, aimed at um, specific uh, min minorities. Some are there for meritorious students. So you have a lot of opportunities to utilize these scholarships and uh, probably the, 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 the link I've given at the bottom, you would actually have it in a lot more links also. Just check out on Google for scholarships and you would find a lot of such. Tamil Nadu government also gives a lot of scholarships for people who are downtrodden, who are meritorious, but who cannot pay for the higher education because higher education is costly, whether it's in India or abroad. So these are actually specifically only for <coughs> university education. This is also, you, could, you have it from MHRD, AIMS, and uh, National Merit Scholarships. So all of these things are very, very helpful for people who are struggling. And we have institutional scholarships also. For example, Satyabama, we have around 1,000 students every year who study without any cost because they are economically downtrodden. They are, we do welcome a lot of uh, students like that to help. So it is basically a philanthropic move by the management to do that. So when you try to look into, I'm, I'm gonna finish off in a few minutes. Uh, uh, you need to probably, this is your life, okay? So I want you to ponder over a few few questions. What is your ambition? What was your ambition? No? So what is, what is what, where are you going right now? So where do you wish to pursue your UG and your PG? India or abroad? Where do you wish to work? Are you keen on getting admission in government or a private institution? What is the highest degree you wish to study? Do you, do you like research and development? Are you aware of interdisciplinary courses? Do you know that the higher degrees you have, the higher paid jobs you, you stand to get? Do you know that you can actually go in for administrative services? the IT industry, you can actually do a BSc microbiology, get into Wipro and TCS, do you know that? There are lots of opportunities. Okay? And you, you could actually have management oriented jobs. I had my own student who went to Oxford University to do a management study, <coughs> biology plus management. A lot of scholarships out there. There are schemes and policies to, for the startups. The last point is, are you aware of the schemes and policies offered by the Indian government to initiate startups? The general point is that, do your homework. All the student, everyone who's listening to me, should do a homework. What is meaning a homework? Do a Google search. Don't be carried over by the name of the course. I've heard, I've seen a lot of parents. I was the head of the department of biomedical engineering for four years. There used to be parents who come, would come and come to me and tell, sir, my daughter did not get medicine. So I'm putting her into biomedical engineering. There is no bigger, bigger fault than that. Medicine is a totally different area. Biomedical engineering is it's a core discipline in engineering and instrumentation. It is electronics and instrumentation. So much of mathematics is going to bombard her. Bio is there, medical is there. So it is an alternative to medicine. Wrong. Look into the syllabus. Look into the syllabus and you need to understand what you're going to see, what you're getting into. So it is your life. It's suddenly like getting married. You need to like, like the person first before you get married. No? So you need to like the subject before you do, before you get into that. So specializations are better. It's better to generalize in the UG, specialize in the PG. Okay. Unless you're really keen on bioinformatics, I would really say, come on, let's do it. Okay. So otherwise you need, it's better to go slow. And 
when you opt for higher studies you are you are leaning on to a path in academics and such you would, at one time you would become over qualified a company would not hire you because they would say i would rather take a undergraduate student than a postgraduate student okay but as far as of now it is not so almost every can every company also really encourages in comparison for example doing the same thing again 25 years are coded in c that's exactly what we want it's called he's called lot of the code so you need to do something repetitively to understand where you're going studying abroad this is my uh, piano teacher his name is mr victor philip his father sent him to germany after 12th standard he was there in germany for 16 years he studied music taught music came back here to india very strange right yeah so what happens especially in in, in countries like in in european countries like germany france all that is required is you learn the language and government there to facilitate higher education they make it all free of cost it's free education there in, in a government in government university there okay so how do you go about you could actually look into look into things like study in germany for example you would have a lot of opportunities this is a place where i started my career in microbiology okay and this was something i came across when i was in 9th 10th standard we came here to chennai myself and my cousin to just enquire in the universities to what are the courses because i was totally bent up on a genetics career i wanted to become a geneticist 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 you know sir but then when i came here it was uh just pure the grace of god it was a 0.6 marks at difference between me and the next student and i i studied to be the best student in undergraduate but i did not study for 0.6 marks it was god's grace which brought me here i know i know i know all of those who stood out it's only eight students per year and when i saw these departments awesome you know like, this is one of the crown of, of of the university of madras out here in all of those campuses which are around many campuses of madras university so imagine me at the end of my bsc looking at a department of genetics department of microbiology endocrinology what is that so you know th th that's how specialized it gets you know, it, it's it's really a very very specialized you don't have all of these um, it's called faculty of medicine courses so you have it in a very few places like cmc velour aims jipma pondicherry and tarumani madras university campus and a lot of private colleges also which have actually taken up this in the recent uh, past my students in max planck institute philippine sacred rajavelu armogam he again he again went on to have his post doc in germany he is now right now at trivandrum at tbg uh, tb uh, trivand rajiv gandhi center for biotechnology in inspire inspire professor and uh, renuka possibility who is now a geneticist at belgium a lot of opportunities i have listed out so many probably you should you should look into uh, uh look into these opportunities you could just look just put as careers for a biologist on google you would actually get so what are the jobs what sort of jobs you would get as a biotechnologist a medical scientist biotech biological scientist medical and clinical lab technologists biochemists biophysicists biomedical engineers microbiologists epidemiologists like here for bioinformatics a bioinformatic researcher analysts engineers developers curators and gene analyst protein analyst the list goes on and on this is actually the this is this is actually titles of chapters i've taken from a book called bioinformatics algorithms which i teach for my students in btech bioinformatics no all of these are very very complex problems which are looked upon very differently by a bioinformatics scientist okay so why have we not developed an hiv vaccine which animal gave us sars no such kind of complex questions interesting questions this is the book from which i have taken it probably if you are interested you could you could write to me and i would help you these are the courses we have at satyabama with at, at, at the bsc level we have got biotechnology biochemistry microbiology bioinformatics and data science a beautiful course i would really encourage you to look into this course bioinformatics and data science which is a very very interesting course which 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 really which is got a beautiful syllabus we framed with the help of iit professors and probably it would, it would really help you uh, get into a very uh, um, uh, challenging job high paying job in the days to come these are the courses uh, biology courses undergraduate level uh, at uh, itraj college of women microbiology biochemistry botany zoology nutrition advanced zoology biotechnology plant biotechnology and biotechnology plant biology and biotechnology psychology so this is actually the pamphlet for uh, department of uh, bioinformatics and the center where i work so it's for bsc program and bsc and msc programs in bioinformatics and data science data science this is this was from february 2019 okay this is where the world is going bosch robert robert bosch is supposed to be an mnc and they invested 20 crores on a small lab you should just go see that lab 
it's a very very small place and 20 crores to work on artificial intelligence and data science and it is there the department of biotechnology at iit madras okay so why should you opt for a career in biosciences because we've got lots coming up lots of investment coming up and we know especially after corona and uh, all the aftermath of corona we are going to give a lot of importance and this is the right time for you to switch into biotechnology and the biological sciences indian scenario they would, they would, they would, people would say to me no no india is still back no no india is coming up just go to bangalore and hyderabad and Ch chennai is not come up so there's a lot of opportunities lots of career growth available and billions of dollars are being invested out here in, in the indian industry too okay there are lots of recruiters this is, this is something i got ready many years back so what who are the major recruiters for uh, a biology graduate okay the list goes on and on okay and this for biotechnology alone i've listed with the urls of the companies this is for bioinformatics this is for clinical research this is for industrial biotech jobs genetic engineering jobs plant agrobiotic jobs environmental biotech jobs pharma biotech jobs this is one of the largest pharma biotech jobs pharma biotech jobs this is actually an email from one of my students who out of so much of concern because he 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 could see a lot of his own juniors moving out to it companies working in some banking and unrelated jobs after a degree in biotechnology bioinformatics and biomedical engineering or microbiology he told the kind he was he was trying to tell about he had his masters from karolinska in sweden and he went on to us for his phd and he wrote things like how sad it is and how much how much of opportunities await a student who is focused on a career in biology this is actually a turing awardee his name is donald nut see what he says i can't be as confident about computer science as i can be about biology biology easily has 500 years of exciting problems to work on it's at that level you know we are the ones who provide problems we are the ones who provide challenges to the computer scientist yeah robert frost poem i believe i really love this poem and i'm really happy that i took the road less traveled by and i don't regret it i don't regret one bit of it because you know why because load road leads on to road you can't really come back because you go in one of these roads that will again diverge that's the real point this is this is my teacher mr sandhya raghuram who who actually told mendel's greatness lies not in what he did but how he did it i would like to come to conclude the session with a small story okay i'll just finish off in in 2 minutes this is a boy who was studying in a kendri vidyalaya school in bangalore and uh, he was not a very good student he was sick also and before the public examination his father got a call his father was a scientist at hal bangalore and uh, they told him you please take your son out of the school because we don't want our first want our first failure ever you know it was a very shameful uh, moment for a father who was a scientist that his son would not even clear uh, 10 standard it was a very sad time and then he he moves out he, he comes out and he tries to learn some music and the music teacher says you're not good enough you don't have the musical talent in you and you know what right now he's he was on the limca book of world records and right now he's in the guinness book of world records for having been the most traveled man on earth in the quickest possible time to all the countries of the world okay his name is sri prasad and uh, uh, beni prasad is uh, is basically a guitarist and uh, i love him because i am also a guitarist and uh, he went on to uh, he was actually called he was called to play in the opening ceremony of the olympic games at greece athens and you know i was actually listening to he what he was talking he was talking here here in mcc a few years back he told this he told for a 20 minute performance i practiced 168 hours a week he said for a 20 minute performance in the olympic games opening ceremony of the olympic games he said he practiced 168 hours a week do you know do you know the connection between a week and 168 hours it is 24 into 7 he said i practiced for one full week without eating and sleeping you understand there is he told there's no shortcut to success he had arthritic fingers he, he had broken fingers he said with my broken fingers and my broken life if i could do so much god help me do so much how could how much can you all do i think if we put in this sort of effort in any field i'm sure we would go places and our country will go places thanks a lot for your patience i'm really uh, i'm sorry for i think i've taken a little more time than what was given to me you could always write to us uh 
at this email id studentcounseling2020 at gmail.com or to my personal email id danalixander gmail.com. Thank you for your patient hearing. Thank you, organizers, for the opportunity. Thank you. 10 minutes. Sir, uh, Daniel, sir, thank you very much for your valuable time. That was a massive outflow of information regarding all the courses and the careers, starting from live examples to proven facts like PCR and Kalpana Chavla and uh, or the, this story about the 10th thank standard you. boy. Thank you, ma'am. So that was, I think you have motivated enough, all of us, all the participants. Thank you, ma'am. And, yeah, and I personally feel that the the participants who have not attended have missed this uh, meticulous planning oh, session. Um, and I hope the participants have gained genuine uh, information about all the uh, topics that you have listed. And uh, thanks for, all, for, for everything, sir. Thanks for thank the valuable time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, uh, thank you very much, sir. And I have a few questions for you. I have picked up a few questions. Okay. Uh, can I go ahead, sir? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this first question is from Jignesh. Sir, can you please say what are the steps to achieve PhD in any field of biology? Okay, that's a good question, actually. So I'm, I'm glad that after you just after your uh, uh, UG uh, after your school, you are looking at a, looking about a PhD. It's very good. So uh, you you should first go on into a science degree. I would I would encourage you to go on into a science degree, do a do a BSc or a BTech course or a, 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 a engineering course or a science course, and then do an MSc or an MTech course and then go on into a PhD. Otherwise, you could also look for integrated courses where you could do uh, one stretch, an MSc or an MTech, and then you could go for a PhD. But as of now, I think uh, there are places where you can also do a BSc and a PhD also, okay? So overall, I think, uh, but still you need to have cover those years. And it is slightly a long route where we, we probably have to put in at least uh, seven, eight years. Okay? For example, I, I took three plus three plus six years. So three years for a UG, three years for a PG, and then six years for a uh, PhD. So it is a slightly wrong route, but I'm sure you won't regret it. And that's the actual route. You do an undergraduate, post-graduation, or integrate it, and then go on for a PhD, or else finish off a BSc. And there are places where you have an honors degree also in, in, in BSc, BSc honors, which is considered on par with an MSc. And uh, a BTEC, for example, it is considered on par with an MSc. You can actually do a net examination, and then straight away you can do a PhD. So that's the, the, those are the possible routes for a PhD. Okay, okay, sir. I think uh, this is a question for uh, for your expertise what, what, from Yogi Don. So, what does uh, bioinformatics mean? Thank you, thank you for that question. Okay, so uh, it is basically uh, looking into biological data. Okay, or literally put DNA data. So we look at DNA and proteins, and we are trying to actually get information about yourself, about a person, about the kind of uh, person he or she is. For example, there are studies where they would say that if you have a specific mutation, so you know, DNA is very long. It's called it's 3.2 billion nucleotides long. So in that, in, in that one of the nucleotide changes, you can't go to UTI. For example, okay, in OT, what happens? Oxygen tension goes down. RBCs, which are biconcave, become sickle in shape. So it is actually a very dangerous situation when RBCs get sickled and a person might even die. Or another case, for example, they've done a study where uh, you have a specific mutation. A person would have a tendency to commit suicide or a person would develop diabetes or a person would have autism or a person would be brilliantly, into, very intelligent. Okay? So it is about looking into... DNA data at a very personal level and try to try to actually find out uh, 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 other people who are who are like you comparing in databases and trying to understand DNA DNA understand proteins understand what these metabolic pathways which are made up uh, which make up these uh, which are made up by these proteins and to get the big picture which is called systems biology is also part of the bioinformatics so it's a very very fascinating field where we bring in so you're looking into life through the eyes of a computer that's exactly what it is. So it's for people who like computers, who like very uh, uh, tech savvy jobs and very computer savvy uh, professions. And it is a very interesting field, which has got a lot of future in India and abroad, very high paying salaries also. Okay, so thank you. Uh, I think there's another question from Preeti. Is there a scope for genetic engineering in India? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. 
yeah it is a pity that it is a pity that lot of institutions are not really offering core courses there were a few institutes which are offering they were also taken it off but lot of future you know government of india funds pours in funds you know it's it's, it's one of those areas where you have all of these crispr and talon and all of this gene editing uh, technologies and uh, genetic engineering as you know it is quite it is quite old as of now but still so much of things are yet to be done where we manipulate genes and when we so if we, we there are institutes offering this at um, at a, a pg degree level okay genetic engineering you might not find at the ug degree level but you have a lot of institutes where they offer genetic engineering uh, at a pg level and bioinformatics is offered at the ug and the pg level also so genetic engineering has a lot of scope and you should probably look into do a search for institutes offering genetic engineering and you should definitely make an attempt to get into a course like that if you're interested uh, thank you sir i think the next question is uh, uh, will be interesting for our for uh, we teachers uh, this is from aparna sir what exam should we write for becoming a professor okay exams is it okay so for first you need to okay according to the indian government by 2021 every college teacher has to have a phd degree okay so that's the latest norm so you need to have a ug degree a phd degree and a phd degree and by the time you get into a phd degree itself you would have written a lot of examinations for example the net examination is one and then you have the, the gate examination net examination set examinations for uh, individual uh, uh, um, uh, states are there slate examination so lot of all of these government examinations are there and uh, a phd degree so after a phd degree you don't write an examination you will write all these exa- all examinations before a phd degree because even for getting an admission into a phd you need to have these government examinations which are are, are important so uh, it is not exactly a specific examination to become a professor you need to have a phd degree or sometimes they even prefer a post doc just going going uh, doing a, a, a post phd a training for a couple of years that's what is required for to become a professor thank you sir uh, i think uh, the next question our hod ma'am will answer um, uh, it's from uh, jessica ma'am can you tell us about the careers in microbiology Uh, thank you linet uh, jessica after uh, bsc microbiology you can work in various laboratories as a uh, junior okay junior uh, research fellow not a junior research fellow as a technician so i always um, ask my students to complete their post graduation so that they get a better job as a research associate or a microbiologist in various uh, fields like food uh industries and industries that produce enzymes and uh, agricultural industries like we produce biofertilizers bio uh, pesticides management of uh, plant crop diseases and uh, apart from that the only thing that comes to everybody's mind after microbiology is that they can work in a medical laboratory that is not the only case we have so many other applied uh, part of microbiology where uh, people don't really don't uh, know and especially in food industry from what you get uh, from the chicken you get to the biscuits that you get everything undergoes something called uh, quality control and you need a microbiologist for all these things every five star hotel has a microbiologist so the opportunities for a microbiologist after a pg degree in microbiology is very good thank you ma'am uh, i think two more questions sir uh, so this is from damini rithika sir can you please explain what is the role of big data analysis in biological sciences yeah see as i told you uh, data is huge okay when i say 3.2 billion nucleotides in dna that's a very big number Okay, billion is ten point nine, and what happens when you start comparing uh, DNA sequences of hundred people, of people in Iceland, for example, Iceland is a place where everyone has got uh, their DNA barcoded. Everyone knows exactly where they are going, what sort of diseases they have. So, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the the, the question was, uh, um, ma'am, your your audio is muted. your audio is uh, muted what is what is the role of big data analysis in biological yeah. sciences yeah it's about it's about prediction as i told you right so it's about uh, uh, we we have a lot of data of of a single person okay it could be genomic data it could be 
uh, it's about dna you could have actually the data from mrna transcriptomic data proteins proteomic data metabolomic meta- the metabolic pathways so all of these how do they contribute for a, a, for a person uh, for a person to get a disease or how would this data contribute for a person to recover from a disease what is the probability that this person would develop a disease in the future okay so predictive analysis so all of these things involve machine learning artificial intelligence and a lot of computational techniques which which are involved there so big data is basically we are talking about uh, uh, multiple dimensions of data as well as a lot of uh, variety of data okay so we we call it a, a lot of visa there actually so uh, you have uh, a lot of different types varieties and uh, uh, the velocity and all that so you have a lot of uh, uh, types of data which are actually put together in a very complex manner to do the analysis so all of this is possible only when you know learn the basic um, uh, when you have the basic understanding though these are actually basic biological problems we need the help of computers computer scientists as well as mathematics to help us understand okay so big data is not alone in biology it is used in a lot of ways for example you they they they're making personal profiles of you from facebook so all the friends you have whose posts you are liking whose posts you are posting so from this they are develop they will they, they 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 can develop a kind of profile of you they can develop an emotional profile of you intellectual profile of you so it's an analysis is of huge networks look at your network of your own facebook who's your friend who's your friend's friend so it goes like that you have genes are there genes interact with many multiple genes so we are trying to have a big huge data which we analyze and that analysis helps us improve the health of a person that's exactly what is the role of big data in bioinformatics and in healthcare Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Parveen Zinat, I think our HOD ma'am has uh, answered your question. You have asked just by a graduation in microbiology, what are the careers and the starting question, uh, starting a salary. Uh, I think for for the uh, last question for the session, uh, on a lighter note, Jignesh has asked, can we really make mutants from mixing any animal DNA with a human, like a spider man? Is that really possible, or it's just an imagination? <laughs> it is possible it is possible uh, they have made a lot of uh, uh, f- f- for example when you look into uh, a case of uh, a, a, a bacteria which eats petrol okay we are trying to actually emphasize one specific role for the bacterium or you make a a tomato which is the size of a room okay or a potato so you actually try to we are trying to uh, increase a specific biological process or we could have we could a lot of hybrids we've got we got hybrids or different multiple organisms natural hybrids are there artificially people can people have made hybrids so it it is possible to 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 genetically engineer dna and to to make uh, hybrid organisms and to take this to the next level okay sometimes it gets very uh, scary too I think probably that's what you hear. Yeah, to. yeah, yeah. I think it's a question of curiosity. curiosity. Uh, sir, um, uh, sir, uh, people have uh, asked: Is it possible to have your PPT or the link for your presentation? Uh, we are uh, participants for your kind notice. We have recorded the session, and the YouTube link for the recorded session will be sent to you through email. Um, and those of you who want the presentation, I, you can write to me at. my personal email id or the or any of these email ids which you see here out here okay, okay. you please okay. mail it because the links I, i i didn't have i took it a screenshot and kept it so if i send you the presentation okay. you will not be able to follow the links so you will okay. you i will need to send you the actual word document or the powerpoint document i'll send it to you if okay. you can mail it mail it to me out here okay so that was uh, the questions all about sir over to uh, our hod krishna prema ma'am good afternoon uh i take uh, i take it's a great honor for me to thank on behalf of the management and the principal uh everybody who is involved in this particular event i especially our guest uh, the resource person dr daniel alex anand associate professor department of informatics and the center for molecular data science and systems biology satyabhama institute of science and technology chennai sir you started with gregor mendel and you ended with data science it was quite an elaborate talk and uh, it is 
I felt it was impossible for anybody to do such a big analysis in the few days that was given to you for preparation of the slides. And uh, it was uh, really a massive speech. And I think uh, the, all the participants would have benefited uh, by this uh, lecture. And sir, will you, uh, please send the PPT also to us and we will mail along with the video to everybody. If the participants are interested, they can directly uh, write to Alex, sir. Sure, ma'am. Sir, sure. Uh, I would also thank you for uh, introducing all the online courses, which has been, uh, we as teachers of the college and universities, we know about online courses. Still, the students are not aware of MOOC and NPTEL and Coursera, etc. Thank you for uh, telling them about that also. And um, uh, I would like to say that I am very happy to be a biologist. And I missed my medical seat by 0.5 marks. <laughs> and I ended up doing zoology. At, at that time, I felt frustrated. But now I'm really happy to be a biologist. And I'm yes. teaching for the past 20 years. And I'm really fortunate to be a microbiologist. Yes, ma'am. I Same think uh, the Indeed, students we are all... <laughs> who... <laughs> we, everybody is. Uh, so students who really aspire to be... Uh, uh, a doctor, I think they should not get upset. Once uh, they start, you know, liking the subject, they will not feel bad about not being a doctor later. So Absolutely. this is what I would like to tell to the students because once they take biology, they feel they have to become a doctor. Otherwise, there is no other opportunity in biology. I hope all the participants would have benefited. I think sir has given a, a it's not a glance, in fact, as the yeah. title says. It, <laughs> It is uh, an in elaborate, uh, in-depth in uh, information you, about the biology, biological fields. I thank you very much, sir, for this. Thank you, ma'am. Thank uh, you very much. Your time for off and preparing the slides and uh, enlightening all of us. In fact, thank, thank you, you very so much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, participants. Thanks, thank you, participants. Thank, thank, thank you, you, participants. I, yeah. And I thank uh, uh, Mrs. Linnit Navina for thank coordinating you, uh, this event so well. And uh, uh, she is, in fact, she in between, she traveled to Coimbatore also. <laughs> and she is handling the situation from there. <laughs> so thank you, Linnit. And thank, thank you, you all my, all the colleagues um, of the department uh, for helping us out during the lockdown period. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Few, Thank yeah, few information for the participants. The uh, feedback form link will be posted now. Please fill in the feedback form. Uh, and uh, this will enable you to get the uh, e-certificate through the mail. So I'm posting it now. Kindly fill it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, one and all, for joining us. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Lynette. Thank you. I think Vidya um, can take over once everybody has taken the feedback form link. I'll post it again.